The goal of this video is to help you better understand what deafness is and the challenges faced by deaf children and their families. We will discuss the causes and types of deafness, as well as the history and education of the deaf. Instead of focusing on deafness as a defect to be fixed, we will take a look at the unique deaf culture and the beauty of their natural language, which is sign language and the important role that it plays in the education of deaf children. Having a mindset that being deaf is a deficiency, many well-meaning parents and doctors work hard to make their children undeaf, or so-called normal, forcing them to speak and lip read instead of sign. In the meanwhile, precious time is lost as many deaf children grow out of that crucial early language acquisition phase. Their lack of language and not of hearing then becomes their most severe disability. In any given population, approximately one in 1,000 infants is born totally deaf, while an additional eight per 1,000 are born with a hearing loss at different levels. And in developing countries, these rates are even higher. Those with deafness are the largest group of persons with disabilities globally, and 80% of deaf persons live in the developing world. This is due to many factors, which include poor maternal health, poor neonatal care, a higher incidence of childhood illness, and a higher rate of interfamily marriages. There are three models of deafness that affect an individual's perspectives, interactions, and self-identification. These are known as the medical model, the social model, and the cultural model. The medical model states that deafness is a handicap or an impairment that needs to be repaired in order to improve one's quality of life. Surgical interventions and rigorous speech therapy are viewed as potential cures for a broken condition. The social model suggests that individuals who are deaf suffer disability as a result of their environment, which marginalizes them due to their lack of language skills and not because of their physical limitations. This social model stresses the importance of education in sign language which should ideally start at a very young age. The cultural model focuses on a shared language and culture, a desire to celebrate deaf culture and life. It stresses the beauty of being deaf and views the condition as neither a physical ailment nor a disability. There are two main types of deafness. Conductive hearing loss, which is caused by disease such as ear infections or an obstruction in the outer or middle ear. And this type of hearing loss can be helped or cured through surgical or medical treatment. But the highest incidence of deafness is called sensory neural hearing loss, or what's known as nerve deafness. The root cause is damage to the inner ear, known as the cochlea, or to the auditory nerve. There's no medical treatment or cure, although cochlear implantation is successful in some cases. Congenital deafness means that hearing loss is present at birth and is pre-lingual, deaf before hearing or using speech. Whereas acquired deafness means 
that hearing loss was due to some outside cause after birth and is postlingual, where deafness came after hearing or using speech. Congenital or before birth deafness is most often hereditary, as deafness can be a recessive gene. When that recessive gene is present in both parents, there is a higher probability of a child being born with a hearing loss. It can also be caused by prenatal illnesses or fetal injury due to rubella, maternal diabetes, alcohol or drug poisoning, and other fetal conditions. Some major causes of acquired deafness after birth are the following, ear infections, meningitis, childhood illnesses with high fever such as mumps, measles, chicken box, which goes untreated, loud, prolonged noise exposure, particularly with those who work with industrial equipment or even rock musicians, and aging, where hearing loss is very common in the elderly. Hearing loss is measured by loudness in decibels and frequency in hertz. There are four levels of deafness, as you can see on the chart here, ranging from mild to moderate to severe and to profound. The loudness is shown along the side and the frequency is shown across the top. Picture a piano keyboard. All the notes may be played at the same loudness, but the notes on the left-hand side are low and easy to hear, whereas the keys on the far right side are very high-pitched and not as clear. You can see some examples in what is called the speech banana. The levels of sound in speech are illustrated here in the yellow section. Although speech is in a similar range of loudness, it varies greatly in frequency. For example, low sounds are those like j, z, g, whereas higher frequency sounds are p, ch, k, and then the even higher pitched f, th, s. A mild hearing loss is one of 30 to 40 decibels. This is also referred to as hard of hearing. At this level, speech can be difficult to understand, especially if there's a lot of background noise. Moderate deafness is in the range of 40 to 70 decibels. Think of noises like a dog barking or a baby crying. A hearing aid can effectively help to improve hearing for those with a mild or moderate hearing loss. Severe deafness is a loss of 70 up to 90 decibels. Noises such as a car honking or a loud piano playing. Only very loud sounds are heard and speech perception, even with hearing aids, is almost non-existent. Profound deafness is a 90 decibel or greater loss. Think of an airplane taking off or a motorcycle starting up or a door slamming. One feels the vibrations more than actually hearing the sound. It's a total hearing loss and a hearing aid is ineffective. Keep in mind that the majority of deaf children fall in this category of having a profound hearing loss. Hearing aids are not helpful and sign language is essential. Deaf people prefer to be simply called deaf, written with a capital D, similar to how other communities are labeled, such as the Memon community, the Hispanic community, and so forth. 
Common terms used in the past to describe the deaf or hard of hearing individual include such terms as disabled, handicapped, deaf mute, or deaf and dumb. Such terms are considered antiquated and offensive to those in the deaf community. The term hearing impaired is also not acceptable to deaf people. It implies that something about them is substandard or broken and needs repair. Deaf people are proud of their culture and their language, something we will now explore further. Members of deaf cultures communicate via sign language. It is their native language. Sign language is not universal, but each country has its own indigenous sign language, which is not based on the local written nor oral language. For example, the USA, UK, Canada, and Australia all speak and write in English but their sign languages are each unique and different. In Pakistan, it is called Pakistan Sign Language, or PSL. There are over 200 distinct sign languages in the world. The United Nations recognizes that sign languages are equal in status to spoken languages and should be respected and promoted. The United Nations has proclaimed September 23rd on a yearly basis as the International Day of Sign Languages in order to raise awareness of the importance of sign language and the full rights of people who are deaf. When speaking about deaf education, there are generally two schools of thought the oral method of teaching speech and lip reading versus that of using sign language. Today, it is generally accepted that a sign language environment is best for a deaf child and has the best long-term learning results. The first school of the deaf was established in France in the mid-1700s. It effectively used French sign language with excellent results. Thomas Gallaudet was visiting France from the United States, and he brought back this teaching to America, eventually opening many residential schools for the deaf. These schools all used a sign language-based model, and education of the deaf grew and flourished. In 1864, Gallaudet University was built in Washington, D.C. It is the only university in the world specifically designed for the education of the deaf and hard of hearing. In 1880, the Milan Congress in Europe erroneously ruled that the oral method is superior to that of sign language instruction. This led to a dark era in deaf education, as the oral method was, and still is, not effective in teaching profoundly deaf children. Deaf teachers lost their jobs as hearing teachers took their place and sign language was banned from use. This persisted for nearly 100 years when it was finally recognized that sign language is a much better way of teaching profoundly deaf children. The modern premise in deaf education is that all children are born with the same basic capacities for learning and language, whether deaf or hearing, and they acquire the majority of their language in the formative years from birth to five years of age. Whereas hearing children will have been exposed to upwards of 10,000 words by the time they are five, Deaf children whose parents don't sign grow up in a language vacuum. Early exposure to sign language with family support is crucial, as after five years of age, language learning becomes much more difficult. Sign language helps deaf children develop literacy skills on equal terms with their hearing peers. 
But the problem is that 90% of deaf children are born to hearing parents, the majority of whom are not aware of what to do. Thus, hearing parents and their families need to have early and accurate information. They need not only audiological and medical information, but also easy access to learn basic sign language so that their deaf child can benefit. In developed countries, all deaf children go to school. In Pakistan, there are more than one million deaf children of school age, yet less than 5% have access to education. Thus, the challenge is not only to create more accessible school opportunities, but also to provide learning resources in their native Pakistan Sign Language to capacitate both them and their families. Research shows that deaf children given quality education in a bilingual setting are most likely to succeed. Bilingual means teaching both sign language and the written language, such as learning PSL as well as Urdu or English or even both. Deaf culture exists at the heart of deaf communities everywhere in the world. It is the set of social beliefs, behaviors, art, literary traditions, history, values, and shared institutions of communities that are influenced by deafness and which use sign language as their main means of communication. We use the lowercase deaf with a small d when referring to the audiological and medical condition of not hearing, and the uppercase deaf with a capital D when referring to those who are part of the deaf community and use sign language, such as PSL. Members of the deaf community view deafness as a difference in human experience, rather than a disability or a disease. They take pride in their deaf identity. If we view the deaf community not as a disability group, but as a minority culture that speaks another language, their sign language, our perception changes. We then realize that to succeed, the deaf simply need empowerment through education and training, the same opportunity that is everyone's right. Following are some qualities of deaf culture. The use of sign language is central to deaf cultural identity. An oral-only approach to educating deaf children is not viewed favorably. A positive attitude towards their deafness is typical. Deafness is not generally considered a condition that needs to be fixed. Deaf children in particular are generally very happy and outgoing, with a keen interest in learning about the world around them. This video has given you a better understanding of what it means to be deaf. That deafness is not in itself a disabling condition, but rather they are disabled by those who would exclude them from using their native and natural sign language. Instead of viewing deafness as a deficit or medical condition in need of repair, more attention should be paid to improving access in all spheres of life education, work, communication, information, and social integration. Deaf children can become successful if given the chance to have an education in their language. And deaf people in general can be productive members of society if given equal opportunities to participate.